Hey guys, Trash here. I've just been dropped on this deserted island with only one tree. I'm gonna try and survive 100 days in hardcore and eventually fight the dragon, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna start by punching the only tree on the island and let's hope that it drops a sapling, because if it doesn't then this series is over before it even begins. Getting another sapling seems impossible because I'm not allowing myself to leave the island at all. I can mine down from it and go to the nether, but I can't sail away to look for more land until I'm going to fight the dragon. So let's make our first crafting table and our first wooden pick real quick. And I did get a couple of saplings, thank goodness, so let's replant those and punch some grass and get some seeds going so we can start our tiny little garden. I think I'm going to have my mine entrance right here, so let's start digging that down and get our first cobblestone as quickly as possible. Get our stone tools made, got our pick, our axe, a stone hoe for our garden, and a sword as well. We only found three seeds with our grass punching, so it looks a little pitiful at the moment, but you gotta start somewhere. It's better than nothing. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Now we are gonna start mining down to look for more resources, and- Oh, oh, okay, that's interesting. I found some coal right off the bat, which was really nice because I was getting a little worried about the first night already, and I'm gonna need torches. Please grow. And the sun is already setting on our first day on our hardcore survival island. The first day really flew by. I have no food and no bed, but I made it! And I've got torches! I'm going to make a campfire and set up a little campsite. It's not exactly a starter house, but it's what we've got. Does it protect me very much? No. Is it the cutest thing you've ever seen? Also no. I'm gonna make a chest and a furnace too, as those are necessary things. Okay, I have literally zero food right now, and I need some. Honestly, I'm just gonna go punch a bunch of kelp and cook it on my little campfire. Is it a terrible food choice? Yes. Does it restore like any hunger? No, not at all. Do I have much of a choice? No. I am gonna punch some fish too if I see them though. Well, it's not the most comfy chair, as it is made out of a rock, but it's better than nothing. Now let's start cooking up some of this kelp. And we have survived the first night! I was only a little bit scared. Mobs can't really spawn on our island, so we're safe there, and I know we've got a few more days before the phantoms start spawning, but one single trident-wielding drowned could take me out immediately and just end this. Now let's go back to mining. I found some more coal, which is always nice, and I'm looking for iron. That's my highest priority. If I don't get some iron, like right off the bat, I will probably die. I don't really think I'm the strongest player when it comes to PvP or fighting mobs. I'm definitely more of a let's make this look cute type of player. But since this is hardcore, safety has to come before aesthetics for at least a little bit. And we found some iron. I also found this water cave, which I would like to explore for more resources, but knowing me, I will probably get trapped and drown immediately. And we have a giant tree! Nice! We definitely have plenty of wood now, even if it is a pain to chop down. We have 11 iron, so I'm gonna get that smelting down real quick and take care of this giant tree behind me while I'm waiting for that. I'm going to make an iron pick, of course, and then probably an iron chest plate. Actually, yeah, definitely an iron chest plate. I need any protection I can get right now. I don't know why I even hesitated. Much better. Back to mining, I found some copper which is pretty useless to me at this point, but I also found some gold and some more iron which is not useless. And then I found this lava which was terrifying. So I dug up into the wall and guess what, I found a whole lava pool which is not great now because it's a hazard for sure, but at least I have it for obsidian when I'm ready to go to the nether, but I'm not ready for the nether yet, so it's gonna be a second. I kept mining down and I broke into this cave and I saw a creeper immediately so I noped out of there. Not today my good sir, I'll come back later and they're still not grown. I'm going to wait for this iron to smelt up and make more armor with it. The faster I can get full iron armor, the better. I mean, the phantoms will be here any day now. Let's make another iron pick too, actually, because I've already almost gone through the first one, and then let's get some leggings too. And then with my last three, I think I'm gonna go for the iron ax because I can fight with it and chop down trees with it. Now I have fancy pants. And look, my wheat finally grew, so I can expand my farm by one whole extra seed. Now we are going to try and brave this cave, and let's hope the creeper isn't hanging out right there this time. Okay, let's try this. Ooh, I'm scared. And oh, there's a creeper right there. Hey guy, go on, get out of here. I don't want to be friends with you. And oh, he blew up. Okay, that's one way to take care of that. Not the worst interaction with a creeper I've ever had. I would rate it pretty low on the creeper scale. Oh look, a giant cave. I'm gonna avoid that for now. I don't need to be dying immediately. Let's just focus on grabbing as many resources as we can right now in the upper levels of this cave. It actually seems to be a pretty big cave system, so there's a ton of stuff down here. And it has led me into this giant cave!
Okay, anyway, back to mining. And then this child comes out of nowhere and tries to get me, but I was not having that. I killed that child. I took him out. I found some redstone, and then I found diamonds. I honestly did not expect to find diamonds this fast at all, so I was shocked when I saw these. Normally it takes me forever to find diamonds because I have a healthy fear of the caves, so I don't go in them. But like, I have to. I don't have a choice. If I want to get more resources and explore, my tiny little island doesn't offer much in the way of exploration. There were 14 diamonds in that vein. That's crazy. So these are my caving spoils. I got almost a stack and a half of iron, which is pretty good in my opinion, and some lapis and gold, and then of course my diamonds. Let's get this iron in the furnace, and then I know I need to use my string to make a bed for that exact reason. I really thought I had a little bit longer before phantoms spawned. I mean, I know I don't have a bed, but the days passed quicker than I thought, and th they attacked me, so I hid in my mine and fought them. But hey, at least my wheat grew. I still haven't gotten a complete piece of bread from it, but it's growing. Based on last night's events, I'm gonna make a diamond chest plate out of my diamonds for sure, and then a diamond pick and a diamond sword for fighting. Normally I wouldn't use my diamonds on a sword this fast, but I think I need it at this point. And I can finally make this fishing pole without being attacked this time, so let's make a dock to fish off of real quick. It's not the fanciest thing I've ever built, and it's definitely very simple, but that's all we need right now. And now we can do some fishing and get some real food going instead of surviving off of apples and kelp. Now that I have some cooked cod and a diamond chest plate, let's brave the caves again. Of course a creeper shows up immediately and tries to attack me. But I found a mine shaft, which means string, which means wool, which means I can make a bed. And some more diamonds! I found a spider spawner, which I quickly secured and rid of its inhabitants. I don't like spider spawners though, because they're like the worst one to make a farm out of, so I'm hoping I can find something else. But I mean, in a pinch it'll do. There is a golden apple at least, so that might help keep me alive a little bit longer. And some bones for bone meal, which my farm definitely needs, and some melon seeds. Which whatever, I guess I can eat melons, but I'm not that excited about it. Then I went back to getting string, and I found a cave spider spawner that I was closing off when I was attacked brutally by this guy. Which caused me to panic for a while, because I almost died. Oh my god, no, please don't let me die like this. But I ate my fish and I recovered and I found another spawner and this one is a zombie spawner which is a lot easier to make a farm out of so I'll probably do that. And then there's more bones in here which means more bone meal and more wheat and more bread. And another diamond. Another two diamonds actually and then another diamond. That's enough of that for now. Let's finally make a bed. I don't want my bed to be a boring plain white bed though, but I don't have a whole lot to work with here. So I think I'm going to use my lapis and bone meal to make dye, which I normally would not do, but now I have a cute light blue bed. Look at my bed, I finally have a bed, and now the phantoms can't get me, and I can finally get that advancement, that sweet dreams advancement. Nothing can stop me now. It only took me seven days to accomplish this. We're on day seven at this point, and I've been attacked by phantoms so much. I cut it out of the footage because it was just a lot of me hiding in the mine trying to kill them, but I was fighting for my life out here. Oh, also I found a geode while I was in the cave, so I grabbed a bunch of calcite for my starter house that I'm about to build, and I made a stone cutter and got some polished diorite and deep slate ready. And now it's starter house time. break intermission it's wheat break time we're farming because it's farming time and look how much wheat we have now
Okay, starter house is done. This is the interior. I think it turned out pretty cute for what we have to work with. I've got some storage, got my crafting section, got a little furnace for smelting, our bed with some nightstands for extra storage, and then we have an upstairs section over here which will be good for more storage because we'll definitely need that at some point. And this is my view! Now there's only one more thing I want to accomplish in this first 25 days and it's getting the rest of the diamond armor. So I'm heading back down into the caves. Well, well that was one down. I think five more to go. Oh look, a creeper. Never mind. Okay, back to diamonds now. Hopefully these two veins are enough to actually reach the goal we set last episode of full diamond armor because I'm getting out of here. Let's escape back to our wonderful and safe house. And okay, we're safe. We can go to sleep. Our plan today is to go to the nether and to get a full enchanting setup, so let's get right into it. We are going to use our new diamonds to make the last two bits of armor that I don't have. Diamond leggings and a diamond helmet. And let's get those put on before anything else happens to us. Now as much as I can't wait to head into Minecraft's version of HE Double Hockey Sticks, we have some chores around the base to get done first. And we definitely need to spruce up this mine entrance, because it's looking a little bit ugly at the moment. I think some deep slate will make this look a whole lot better and more like a serious mine instead of a random staircase below the house. We also need some more lanterns instead of torches, even though that is probably not the best use of my iron right now, but I can't help it, I hate torches. We are also going to plant enough trees to last us for a good long while, so I don't need to be farming trees constantly. Speaking of farming, I'm not loving where my wheat field is right now, so I think I'm going to build a new farm over in this corner of my island and try and make it look just a little bit cuter and like it belongs here. This also fills up some of the space here nicely as I don't know what other builds I could fit in this small area. Now that my chores are done, I need to head back down into the caves to find some more resources. And that's the only reason, and not because I'm putting off going into the nether. That would be crazy, why would you think that? I almost immediately found yet another spider spawner, which is cool for the loot, but I don't need another spider spawner. I want a skeleton spawner. But I fought off the mobs anyway after I immediately ran away when I saw it. And then this guy in his fancy golden armor just refused to die, but I killed him. Don't worry. Once I secured the area with a few torches, I snatched up the loot. And then this may look like a normal boring zombie, but he is not a normal boring zombie because he dropped a carrot. Which I get it, a carrot does not sound that exciting, but when you're stranded on an island, every new crop that isn't wheat is exciting. Except for beetroot. Nobody likes beetroot. Now if only I could get someone to drop a potato. Anyway, I went back to caving, and I came across another creeper, and I tried to kill him too, but he blew up in my face, and that's the second creeper in this episode to do that, and it probably won't be the last. Then I found some coal, which you would think that would not be exciting either, but coal has been such a hard resource for me to find because I've been doing all of my mining at deep slate level because the upper levels of my mine are full of water caves, and I'm not trying to lose my world by dying in a water cave trying to mine coal. After a while I got bored of the caves and I decided to go back into the mine shaft because I knew there were still bits of it I hadn't explored yet. And also I didn't find a single minecart chest the entire time I searched them last episode and there has to be at least one. You guys look at this gravel falling through a spider web. Diamond! Anyway, I heard that if you dig a couple blocks into the end of a mine shaft hallway you can find more of the mine shaft so I started doing that and it worked. I found a couple more sections that I hadn't been in before and this one finally had a minecart chest in it. I had to secure the area before looking at it, and I found another cave spider spawner and blocked that off as quick as possible so I could look at my loot in peace. I found some glow berries, which was super exciting because I haven't been able to find a lush cave of any kind down here, and some pumpkin seeds, which yay, new crop, I mean I usually use jack-o'-lanterns with moss carpet over them for lighting since I hate torches, but I need moss for that, and like I said, I ain't got no moss. These spawners suck, but at least I have more than enough string now. Then I was poking at another hole in the wall when this guy came out of nowhere and tried to attack me, but he was no match for me and my diamond sword, so I made fairly quick work of him. 
Just when I was beginning to think that the mine shaft was all explored, I heard a bunch more spiders, and I could not tell where they were coming from, so I knocked some gravel down and I found another spider spawner. I think this is literally the third regular spider spawner I have found, and they're all relatively close to each other. Like, it's not like I'm traveling hundreds of blocks. Why are there so many spider spawners? I just want a skelly spawner. Like, please, are you kidding me? I don't even like spider spawners. I don't need string anymore. Why does this seed have so many spider spawners? Okay, spider spawner rant over now. Sorry about that. Anyway, the loot was okay. Bones are always nice, and a music disc is cool, but there was a multi-shot book in there, and that's pretty much useless to me, as I don't ever play with a crossbow. My luck is turning around, though, because right outside of the spawner, I found what I'm pretty sure is an iron ore vein. I didn't find a raw iron block, but it's like a ton of iron mixed in with tough, so I think it's a vein. The mineshaft led me out into this giant cave that was absolutely chock full of mobs, but it's pretty cool and I want to explore it more and I'm slightly more prepared and I have an enchanted bow, because right now that seems like a terrifying choice to make. Howdy ma'am. So I tried to go back into the mineshaft and then this creepy boy came out of nowhere and guess what happened? You'll never guess. I exploded yet another creeper. And as a skeleton was aiming for my head, I decided that was my cue to leave and get back to the more sheltered part of the mine, which turned out to be an excellent decision because I found another spawner, and finally, finally it was a skelly spawner. I'm literally so stoked that I finally found a skeleton spawner. I am definitely going to turn this into a mob farm next episode so I can get unlimited arrows for the dragon fight because I don't really have any other way of getting arrows in this world because so far there has been a distinct lack of chickens hanging around. Oh, and don't worry guys, I did mine this diamond that I passed on the way in, I didn't forget about it. I also found another minecart chest with similar loot in it, which was mostly exciting because of the coal. But where's the moss? I just want moss. I also figured I should probably take the iron pick over the diamond horse armor. I haven't seen very many horses on my island. Isn't there a book called Island of the Wild Horses or something, or did I just make that up? Either way, that's enough of being down in the caves. I think that was a very productive way to put off the nether, but I'm starting to miss the daylight. Gotta put away all of my new treasures real quick. I ended up finding three enchanted books between all the spawners, and they are all for crossbows or tridents, which is not super helpful to me personally. I just realized that we don't have any friends on this island at all, and I'm feeling a little bit lonely. So to solve this problem, I'm gonna go out and abduct, I mean, gently convince, some new friends to live with me. I will need to build a little pond or aquarium for them to live in, but I have three new friends. If you guys have any name suggestions or would like a fish named after you, leave a comment down below and I'll pick three of them. Now that I have that iron vein, I'm not nearly as worried about iron, so I decided to make an anvil so that I can rename my new friends. And also probably use it for enchanting later. One of those is a much higher priority than the other, but I'll let you decide which one that is. Okay guys, it's time. I can't put this off any longer. As much as I would like to, if I'm gonna fight the dragon before day 100, I can't keep stalling, so it's obsidian time. Thank goodness I have this lava pool right here for all of my obsidian needs. Of course, this is going to take forever, so I'll let the magic of editing speed it up a little bit for you. Wow, that took no time at all. How amazing. Now let's go figure out where to set this portal up. I'm thinking over here near the end of the island where our tree farm was is a good place to put it so it won't be too noisy over at the house. A little trick is to put the first layer of the portal in the ground because then nobody can tell that you skimped on the corners. Makes you look richer than you are. Gotta get our flint and steel real quick. And let's go light this thing. Okay, I think I am as prepared as I'm going to get. I've got full diamond armor and a piece of gold armor in case I spawn in a crimson forest. Which I am hoping happens because the only way I can get leather other than fishing is by killing hoglins, and without leather I have no books, and without books I have no bookshelves, which makes getting a full enchanting setup impossible. And I need a full enchanting setup. Alright, let's do this guys. Let's hope for a good spawn. Here we go, wish me luck. Oh come on, really? Well, it's a basalt delta. Definitely not what I was hoping for, but I guess it's better than a soul sand valley. Well, let's try and get out of this place as fast as we possibly can and look for a crimson forest so we can start hunting some hoglands. As long as I'm careful and I don't accidentally fall straight into a pit of lava, I should be okay. Unless one of these guys attacks me and I don't know, jumps straight onto my head or something crazy like that. Oh wait, that's exactly what he's trying to do. Nope, not today my dude. I'm not letting a scary slime guy take me out of this world. But uh, the nether fortress that is right behind him might be a different story. 
I mean, yes, I'm happy I've stumbled across another fortress already. That's super cool, but also super dangerous. And of course, there's a blaze spawner literally right there. Again, awesome. I need blaze rods for sure. But really, I couldn't have found this after I had some enchanted armor. Let me just box myself in real quick. Oh, okay. I got the advancement. Um... Not the bravest way I've ever gotten this advancement, but okay. I'm definitely not hiding in a box that I made fighting blazes that way. No, that would be silly. But I got a blaze rod. Guess what? I made a mistake. I made a big, big mistake, and I released some lava, and I was only on half health anyway, so that's great. And one golden apple down already. Awesome. At least I still have two more, but that was not my smartest move. I'm tired of hiding in the basalt, so I'm going to risk it all and make a run for it towards the warped forest, and what I think is a crimson forest too, hopefully. Sometimes you just gotta run for it and hope for the best. And it is a crimson forest. But before we do that, I'm going to try and see what else is in this fortress, because I already have a blaze rod for a brewing stand, so now I just need some nether wart, and there's gotta be some in here somewhere. Let me just put up some anti-wither skeleton barriers real quick. And there's nether wart! And some of the worst fortress loot I have ever seen in my life. Not even a single bar of gold, much less a diamond. Well, at least I got some nether wart. Okay, let's go find some hoglins. Oh, never mind. Okay, that's a bit safer. Let's do this. You guys, I can't believe it took me this long to realize this, but I just remembered that piglins can trade for leather too, and that sounds so much easier than killing hoglins. So I'm gonna head back home and grab some of the gold I have, and then hopefully that will be a little bit faster. Oh, thank goodness. And we're home. Now that we're back, I don't want to go back in there, but I have to. Well, at least I can make some fire resistance potions now. Yeah, I only have 13 leather so far, and that's not nearly enough. But I got some other super important things that I needed, so that's good. And I got a ton of pork from the hogland, so I'm going to cook that up right away so I can have a better food source while I'm in the nether. Bread is fine for the overworld, but not great for the nether. I'm also going to make a campfire and set up a little place to cook some of the pork out here to save on coal since I don't have very much of it left. Plus I just think it looks cute. And while we're at it, I'm going to build a tiny nether wart farm where my flower farm is because that is going to be a little more useful than looking at some dandelions, aka the worst flower in Minecraft. Now before we go back into the fiery world of absolute terror, we're going to make a brewing stand and get that set up over here in this corner. We are also going to make some books so we know how many we have and go ahead and get our enchanting table made real quick so we have that done. I think I'm going to go ahead and place it down over here next to our nether portal because I plan on building something around both of them after I get it all set up. Only need 11 more bookshelves. I'm sure that will be super easy to accomplish. While I am waiting for my food and eventually the gold to cook up, I'm going to build a little bit of a wall around my island just to keep it a little bit more protected from drowned coming up on shore, since that's pretty much the only threat I have here, and also I am definitely not stalling again. Wait for it. Nice. I put slabs on top of the wall all the way around the island because I can still jump up over them, but I don't think the drown can. I'll have to test that out a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure that they can't. Okay, the gold is finally cooking up, and don't tell me I should have used a blast furnace. I'm trying to stall here. Okay, fine. No more stalling. I almost forgot to make fire resistance potions, but thank goodness I remembered. They are super easy to make, and I've got plenty of magma cream thanks to my spawn, so I just threw that in and some redstone to make them 8 minutes long, and now we're good to go. Okay guys, let's do this. I'm heading back in. Let's go find a piglin to give all of our precious gold to. And we have found one. Come on, dude. Look at this nice home I've prepared just for you. Have some gold. I know you want it. And this is where I made a mistake. This little guy ran right in here and attacked me, so I tried to kill him, and of course I accidentally hit my new best friend, which made him super angry, so then I had to kill him, which was very sad, because I thought we had a good thing going. And if that wasn't bad enough, I made even more mistakes immediately after, because I got knocked into a hole by this big guy, and panicked, and oh my god, I made so many mistakes in a row, but I did eat a golden apple, and that was the only mistake I didn't make, because just watch this series of events. Literally down to one heart. What was that? That was way too close. Then I tried to trade with this guy, and the hoglin must have broke my gold helmet because he did not want to be my friend at all, so I ran away from him and built a tower. And I did not think that this was going to work because he was so mad at me, so I didn't think he would want to trade with me. But his love of gold outweighed his anger at me, so he took the gold, and then one of his buddies even came over to join the party too. 
and then I thanked them by giving them a couple of friendly taps with my sword and everything was totally fine. You would think that after all that I would have had enough leather, but no, I had to run home again and get some more gold and also to make some new armor which took four of my ingots which I needed for trading. But oh well. I found one more business associate and I gave him the rest of my gold and was that enough? Still no. So I killed another hoglin and I finally got to escape the nether. It's about time. I was about to lose my mind in there. I ran back into my house to make the rest of the bookshelves and we did it. 15 bookshelves, a full enchanting setup. Now I can go to sleep. Oh, just kidding. I can't because there's a monster nearby and it's this guy and he has a trident. I made another stupid decision and I jumped in the water to fight him, which was not a good choice and he kept hitting me and I killed him right at the last second before a trident ended it all. I have my full enchanting setup done now though. Okay guys, now it's time to put a build around this mess and make our island a little more put together, so let's go ahead and get it done. building break to go down into the caves and find one more diamond so I can make a pickaxe and move the nether portal one block down so it's not in the roof of my house. I probably should have just made the roof one block higher, but it's too late for that now. I'm committed. And that's the build guys, I love it. I think it fits in with the island perfectly and hides the nether portal and enchanting setup with something cute. Plus I found a use for the beetroot seeds I had, decoration. Even if they are useless, they are a pretty color. Also I realized I didn't show you guys what day we ended on last time, so I wanted to show you it is day 49 now. That means we have survived 50 days on our hardcore survival island. Now there's just one more thing I wanna do before the end of the episode, and that is try out my new enchanting table. I think I'm going to enchant my new diamond pick first, so let's see what we get. Oh, okay, fortune 2 and efficiency 3. Not bad, not the worst. At least we have some amount of fortune now. Let's try and enchant my chest plate too, and ugh, fire protection. I guess that's okay for the nether. Let's just do that for now. We are on day 50 of 100, and we have a lot to accomplish this episode, so let's get right into it. Before we do anything else, we got two names for our little fishy friends, so let's take them over to the anvil and rename them. Here we have Salmonella, which I love, and joining her we have Carrie Fisher, both very punny names. Thank you to Bales the Bulbasaur for the comments, and we still have one fishy without a name if anyone else has any ideas. Now that they have names, they need a new home to live in, so we're going to build them a little pond over here in the corner of my island. Kind of ironic that they are living in a little pond right next to the huge ocean, but we can't have them escaping. And don't worry, I use salt water, so they should be just fine. Now we have to add some kelp and plants over here so they feel at home. And here you go, Salmonella and Carrie Fisher. I hope you like your new home. Thanks for keeping me company on my deserted island. Okay, now the main goal we have for this episode is to set up the skelly spawner we found and turn it into a bone and arrow farm. For that, we're going to need a chest, a hopper, some carpet, which I'm glad we have the string to make the wool, and then some glass and a trapdoor. Okay, that should be everything, so let's head down into the caves to our spawner and get to work. 
It looks like we left some chests down here, so that's handy because we can use them to store our extra materials. I think if we dig down over here, we should break into the mine shaft. And yep, it's right there. We can use this space as a staging area and eventually where we will be farming the skeletons. So let's throw down a double chest right there and throw all our extra junk and farm supplies in it real quick. Now I'm going to kind of speed through the actual building of the farm here as most of you have probably seen a mob grinder be built before and there are lots of videos out there that would explain it much better than I can. But we're just going to dig it out 4 blocks on every side and 3 blocks down and I even found some surprise diamonds while I was doing that so that was super exciting, 9 more diamonds. I had an idea for the part where the mine shaft intersects with the spawner and luckily there is a geo right here so I'm just going to um, gracefully fall in real quick and get some amethyst shards. They make such a pretty noise. With those shards, I'm going to make some tinted glass and then cover this part of the mineshaft with it. I love that they added tinted glass to the game, it's so fun to use in mob farms. I won't be able to see it from the lower room, but we can watch it from the other side if we want to. Now I know a bubble elevator with a drop chute would be much more efficient, but I don't have silk touch or any way of getting ice at the moment, and I'm not really sure how to make it without the ice, so we're just going to make a simple water funnel to push them down and drop them right in front of me. I don't need anything crazy, I just need to get some bones and arrows and levels to get me ready to fight the dragon. Let's expand this room a little bit and then get the last pieces put in real quick so we can start farming. I'm just putting a single chest with a hopper in it, if I can manage to jump and shift and place all at the same time. Okay, we did it. And then we put our carpet over the hopper and get our glass and trap door in place and we're good to go. Now for the scariest part of building this skelly farm, getting rid of the torches. I don't want to accidentally get shot off this dirt. I mean, I probably could fight my way out of it, but let's not risk that. We are in hardcore after all. Got the first one. Now just the one on top. Okay, we got it. Ah, time to move. Danger. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Infinite arrows, here we come. Speaking of infinite, we're also going to add an infinite water source over in this corner of the room, because you never know when you're going to need water, and then let's get to making this room a little bit cuter than it's looking now. Okay, now the farm is way back in the mine shaft and it's kind of a maze to get to it. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten lost down here. Whoop, diamonds! So we're gonna make a hallway that leads us straight to the main cave. Not today, pal. Now let's head back up to the surface real quick and do some enchanting. Look at that sunrise. Let's see if we can get some protection on this armor, or okay, sharpness 4, I definitely want that. I'm actually gonna make a new sword real quick and put it on that one I think. Okay, let's see what else we get. Just sharpness 4! Wow, thanks enchanting table. And protection 4 and unbreaking 3 on the leggings. Well, that's a good enchant at least. I'm super happy with that. Now back into the caves for more levels. And of course you know I've got to add some glowberries down here too. Now as I was heading back up, I stopped to get some redstone that was right at the entrance to the tunnel and something super lucky happened. I turned around to see this fine gentleman and I couldn't believe my eyes, so obviously I tried to learn back through the tunnel so I could trap him. Of course I almost got trapped in the hole I just dug redstone out of, but I managed to get out without hurting him or myself too badly and he followed me back. I made a boat as he was harassing me and I trapped him in it and protected him with some dirt walls real quick. 
I grabbed my extra spider eyes and headed up to make a potion of weakness to cure my new best friend. When I kid you not, I somehow got even luckier, like a level of luck that never happens to me in Minecraft, and another zombie villager was coming towards me. I was literally in shock. I didn't even plan on having any villagers during this hundred days because it seemed like it would be way too time consuming to mess with, but these guys just walked right up to me. Okay guys, this is so exciting. I have two zombie villagers trapped in boats right now, so let's go up and make some golden apples and potions of weakness, and we can start our trading empire. I did not expect this episode to go this way, but let's Let's do this. Okay, small problem. I have the sugar cane for sugar and the spider eyes, but I don't have any brown mushrooms yet. The good news is I know where some are, but the bad news is they're in the nether, my least favorite place. Let's see if we can get a good bow enchantment before we head in there. Okay, not bad. And then let's uh, not procrastinate at all by getting our gold smelting and making a grindstone real quick and our second golden apple. We'll put our grindstone there and then enchant our other bow. Okay, awesome. We can make power five. That's good. I'm gonna need that and that sword sucks I have no idea why I didn't disenchant it, but I guess I want the knockback for my creeper issues But at least we have a very nice bow now. That's a relief. Okay guys, no more procrastination We're heading back into the nether. I remember seeing some mushrooms fairly close to the portal So we're gonna run in and grab them as fast as we can and get out of there. Wish me luck Oh good, there they are. Okay, we survived. Let's get our fermented spider eye and start making these potions. Uh, was that a phantom? Terrifying. Okay, potions of weakness acquired. Let's also make a bunch of beds so we can get more villagers and some carrots and decoration blocks and then let's take these enchanted books that we are never going to use and disenchant them so we can make a lectern and get a librarian that will sell us as many bookshelves as we could ever want and then we will never have to hunt hoglins ever again. Alright guys, I think we have everything we need. Let's go cure some villagers and work on getting some good enchanted books. Howdy! Oh, hello. Uh, welcome to the island, I guess. Enjoy your stay. I gotta go. Oh good, you're still here. Okay, I just need to move you a little closer to your friend. Okay, no, no, you don't have to hit me. I'm trying to save you. Okay. Anyway, here, have some of this. And some of these. There, that'll make you feel better soon. And maybe not so angry. Now, while they are curing up, we need to build them a nicer room, since this is where they will probably be living out the rest of their days. So let's just clear it out a little bit and get this area ready for a farm. Oh, zombie doctor. And this guy too. You guys are cured. Okay, fine, they don't wanna look at me, but I promise that they're grateful. Now, like I was saying, we're gonna put a carrot farm over here with a composter so we can get a farmer villager to trade with and start getting some emeralds. And let's also set up some beds over here so they can start making babies. Okay, you guys are free now. Here, have some carrots. Yes, we have some hearts forming. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry I was staring at you during this private time. My bad. And we have a child. Welcome to the island, little guy. Okay, now let's get some carrot trade started in here and start making the big bucks. This guy has a pumpkin trade too for one pumpkin per emerald, which is great, so I'm gonna have to go get my pumpkins and start a pumpkin farm. Now let's start looking for books. Okay, Riptide 2. No, absolutely not. I think I want mending first because my armor is in bad shape and I don't really want to waste time mining for more diamonds. While they are sleeping though, we're gonna work on the room and make it a little more homey for my new friends slash prisoners. And when they are awake, I'll place and break this lectern about a million times until I get something good. Something good like mending. Of course, it could be the one emerald mending trade, but I'm on a schedule here, so seven emeralds works just fine for me. Since we don't have any books, I'll lock in the bookshelf trade, which was very lucky that we got that one with the mending, and get some books so we can get our first mending book. Whoops. Okay, back to decorating. I'm also going to build another carrot farm back here so the villagers can't interfere with it and get in my way when I'm trying to build up my carrot supply. And since the skelly grinder is giving me plenty of bones, I have a ton of bone meal to, to just keep getting more and more and more carrots. I'm also using my fortune pick to harvest them so I get even more. Now 
Now let's make another lectern and get another librarian going. Ooh, silk touch is very tempting, but I really need protection and I'm breaking right now, so I'm gonna pass it up, I think. Okay, looting too is actually pretty good, because I will need it for blaze rods for Eyes of Vendor soon, and it will help me get even more bones and arrows. So I think I'm gonna take that and combine two of them for looting three. So let's lock him in, get some more emeralds, and get that looting too. Let's run back up and grab our anvil real quick so we can start combining stuff and putting it on our armor and tools. I put mending on my sword and I think I'll give it a name as well. I think that's fitting. I need to put a pumpkin farm in behind my carrot farm and I think it will fit well here so let's get some pumpkin seeds going in. Oh, hello. I guess we have an iron golem now. Okay, so I immediately got distracted from the pumpkin farm and bought another looting book and traded some pumpkins with the farmer who leveled up and also has a great melon trade, so that's nice. And then I went over and combined my looting books and I put it on Slicey Dicey and then I celebrated by killing some skeletons just for fun. Then I put mending on my leggings, so they're done now. Okay, distraction's over. Back to the pumpkin farm now. And some more carrots, of course. We got our first pumpkin. Now we're looking for unbreaking. Any level is fine at this point. I just need it. Are you kidding me? I've never gotten mending on the first roll, and I don't even need it. <laughs> yes, unbreaking three. Thank you. Kind of expensive, but worth it. I'm tired of breaking lecterns. Now we're at 36 levels again, so let's see if we can get something good. I think we should get rid of this fire protection chest plate and enchant it again. And yeah, that's much better. Let's throw mending on this guy and get it healed up. Golden carrots? Yes, please. Okay, we finally have a protection for trade and we only need two of them, which is good because they're expensive. But then we'll have full prop for armor. I ran back up top again real quick to make a diamond axe and another pick just to see if I can get something good on the enchanting table. And just efficiency 4, which I guess is fine since we have the other books. And yes, fortune 3. That's nice. Better than my other one if I throw some unbreaking on it. I seem to have too many carrots for just this one guy, so I'm gonna go make another composter and get another carrot trade set up. Okay, that's much better. Okay guys, we've spent a ton of time down in this cave, but now we have fully enchanted tools and armor, a ton of arrows, and golden carrots. So that's amazing progress that I did not expect to make, and we have all these new friends! Now let's head back to the surface and build something cute on the island. Hi Salmonella, hi Carrie Fisher, how are you guys? Anyway, let's grab some blocks for building. I'm thinking I'm just gonna put a little fishing hut right here behind me. It doesn't really have a purpose, it's mostly just to fill out the island, but I think it'll look really cute, so let's get into it.
Okay guys, I hope you like my little fishing hut. I especially like the diagonal dock even though it was a little tricky to figure out. Anyway, it is officially day 75. We have survived 75 days so far and that means we only have 25 more days and that we will be fighting the ender dragon soon. I'm feeling pretty prepared, but a little nervous. We are fighting the dragon today, but first let's finish decorating our island real quick. We got some lanterns from our librarian villager, my favorite trade. Got some leaves for bushes. And we also connected the path up to the house. I also tried my best to build some small custom trees. Custom trees are so hard for me, especially on a small scale, but I think these turned out cute and they fit well with the scale of the island. Let me know what you think. I also built a little trellis type of thing to go over by the fish pond that has some glow berries growing on it. I think I've seen a few people do something like this before and I've always thought it was so cute so I thought I'd add it to my island and it fills up this space nicely. I thought I would add a little flower garden underneath this tree to make the vegetation look more purposeful so I used some andesite and coarse dirt to make it stand out a bit. And our island is now pretty much done design wise. I wanted to finish it up before we go and fight the dragon so if for some reason we don't make it back at least the island will feel complete. Now we have to go back to the dreaded nether and get the rest of the blaze rods we need for our eyes of ender so let's go get our fire resistance potions and get it over with. I do have looting 3 on my sword now so that should make it a lot easier and faster. I still have beef with the nether though so wish me luck. Hi! Bye! Let's splash this real quick. Okay. 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 Yeah, first try. Okay, we got 19 blaze rods, so that should be more than enough for what we need. I'm getting out of here. Now let's make a brewing stand and bring it down to our village or prison, I mean home, and try and get a cleric to trade us the rest of the ender pearls we need. Oh hello, may I come in? Thank you. I got a man trapped in this little room so I'm going to turn him into a cleric and level him up to see what he has while I also farm more carrots. If I never see another carrot again, I'll be happy. I also got an infinity bow from my skelly farm so I'm going to add that to my bow. I don't really need it but this way I won't have to fill my inventory with arrows. I finally got this guy leveled up and he doesn't have any ender pearls, so that's not cool. I'm gonna have to go back up to my house and make another brewing stand and get another cleric and do it all over again. Luckily I still have plenty of time, but still, I'm tired of farming carrots. Oh, also I found this guy and murdered him for his slime real quick. Nice to know that slime can spawn here. Sorry little buddies. Okay, let's do this again. Yes, ender pearls. Thank you, good sir. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Let's get a bunch of these. Okay guys, I have farmed about a billion carrots, but I finally have all the ender pearls I need, so let's head back up and make our final preparations before we set out to find the stronghold. Hopefully I make it back afterwards, or these guys are just going to be stuck down here forever, wondering where I went. We've got plenty of eyes of ender in case a few explode, and let's get some potions of slow falling and extend them to 4 minutes, and then let's also make some potions of strength and get them up to level 2 with some glowstone. This might be overkill, but I want to have every advantage. And let's get a boat made since we're finally leaving the island. And we've got plenty of extra blocks, potions, golden carrots, and some extra glass bottles to get some dragon's breath. Okay, I think we're as ready as we're gonna get. Let's throw our boat down and throw our first eye of ender and see what direction we're going. I can't believe we're actually leaving the island that we have spent the last more than 80 days on. I love our little island that we've built up and I hope I get to see it again. Okay, I guess we're headed out this way. Please don't pop. Okay guys, let's do this. Bye little island. Mr. Turtle. 
Hello, bee. Aren't you cute? Hello, chicken. I haven't seen your kind in ages. Oh, okay, bye. We've made it to the mainland. It feels weird having all this land to explore, but let's make sure we're still on the right track. Oh, we lost that one. Look at the sunflowers. This is where the eyes have taken us, so it's time to dig down and find the stronghold. Hopefully it's not too deep. And there it is. Let's hop down and see what we can see. Okay, seems a little busted, but let's get searching. There's literally a mending book in this chest. That's crazy luck. I've never seen a mending book in a stronghold chest that isn't in the library. I mean, I don't really need it, but I'm gonna take it. And there's another side disc in this chest. I don't know if I've ever found one of these, so that's coming with me too, obviously. <gasps> oh my god, that was a close one. Okay, you gotta go, guy. Whoop, he exploded. Okay, my creeper luck continues. And we finally found the portal. Let's destroy the spawner real quick and take care of these guys. It took me forever to find this. I've been wandering through broken bits of stronghold for what felt like forever. I was starting to worry that it was glitched and there just wouldn't be one at all. Only one eye. Good thing we still have most of ours. Let's get rid of this lava and set up our bed so we can come back here after the fight. If I can survive, that is. Wish me luck, guys. I, I think I'm ready, but I don't think I've ever fought the dragon this early in a world before, so I'm a little nervous. Let's get this portal opened up. Okay, it's really happening. Okay, let's do this. Okay, not too bad. We are close enough to the island. This isn't horrible. Let's make a little walkway and start digging up there. And before I forget, let me drink my potions real quick. Okay, we're up and we're running. Try not to look at any endermen. I should have brought a carved pumpkin, but I forgot. That's okay. Everything is okay. Where's the dragon? Okay, there she is. Oh my god, first try. Okay, well, I'm a professional. I fought the dragon and won. It honestly all went pretty smoothly. I, I angered an enderman at one point and the dragon tried to get me with her breath at the same time, but other than that, it was pretty easy. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't even think I landed the killing blow. I think the thorns from my chest plate took her last bit of health when she tried to knock me away. Probably the least cool way to take her out, but hey, a win is a win. Now let's get the egg and get the heck out of here. So it's actually only day 87 right now. I thought it would take me way longer to find the stronghold and fight the dragon, so I wanted to leave myself plenty of time. But I accomplished it much faster than I thought I would, so I ran back up to the surface real quick and got a bunch of wood, and I think I'm gonna go end raiding and see if I can find an elytra. I didn't think I would make it to this point, but I have time, so why not? Getting wings in this 100 days would be awesome. Hey guys, I'm back!
Okay, let's enter Pearl through. This part always scares me for some reason. Let's turn our render distance way up and see if we can see anything. And we've gotten in city. Nice. That was super lucky. What isn't lucky is that we have to bridge over the void to get there. Oh my god. That was not on purpose. Thank god I was above this island. That could have been terrible. We made it to the much bigger island, thank goodness. I hate the void. I also hate shulkers, but I love shulker boxes. Let's see what we can find in here. Oh my god, I hate these towers, but I know they have loot at the top. Ouch. 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 Alright, not bad. Some nice chest plates. Nothing too crazy. And actually, I am gonna take the silk touch pick, even though it's iron, because I ain't got any silk touch. And there's another city over there, which doesn't look too bad to bridge to if I go across that land over there. Guys, look, there's a city with a boat over there, and that means Elytra. Okay, I'm gonna loot this one real fast and then head over there. I should have brought fireworks, but I honestly didn't think I was gonna make it this far. Boring loot, but I will take this ender chest. Good thing I grabbed that silk touch pick. That was unusually forward thinking of me. Let's go get that Elytra. I'm gonna try and ender pearl over. I think I can make it. Okay, good. Oh, you don't wanna open up? That's fine. I'm patient. I can wait. Oh my god, oh my god, that was stupid. Please just die already. I don't trust you at all and I need to bridge over. Okay, thank you. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Slow falling is probably a good choice. And we made it inside. Okay, give me that elytra. And we've got wings! Finding them wasn't so bad. It only took me three end cities and several near-death experiences. Now let's get this dragon head and fly on out of here. I've never flown with slow falling before. I mean, I know it's called slow falling for a reason, but this is very slow. Okay, let's see if I can fly right into the gateway. Nailed it. And we're back in the real world. I'm gonna grab some of this spruce real quick while I'm on the mainland. And of course I'm gonna loot this village and steal all their hay bales. Oh my gosh, potatoes, finally. I've been wanting potatoes this entire time. You know I've gotta grab some cute flowers real quick too. I'm a sucker for flowers. Let's jump in our boat and get back to our island home. I miss it. There it is. That's definitely a sight for sore eyes. We made it back home guys, I'm so happy. Now we've still got about five days left, so I think I'm gonna do one last build and make a shrine for the dragon egg. But first we have to put our loot away, and I've also got two more fish to name, so let's get that done real quick. Not a bad haul. Gonna make a new anvil real quick, and then here we have La La Lituki. Welcome to the pond. Now let's go catch another friend. And here we have Mia. 
There you go, Mia, and thank you guys so much for the name suggestions. Now it's building time. Small issue. I want the pedestal to be made of quartz and I need more, so back into the nether I go. I'm not as scared this time though. I beat the dragon. I can handle the stupid nether. That's right. Revenge is pretty sweet. Okay, goodbye for real this time, Nether. I've got plenty of quartz now, so let's make some stairs, slabs, and pillars and get this build finished. Let's just put a couple more end rods on the bridge and it's done. I think it turned out pretty good. Now let's take our elytra and get some fireworks made up. Luckily I have a fair amount of sugar cane and gunpowder. And let's throw some mending and unbreaking on this bad boy and take our first real flight. Aw, oh, the island looks so cute from here, I love it. Nice, we stuck the landing. I know it was kind of hard to see while I was flying, so here's a quick overview of the island and all that we have gotten done on it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little overview, and guess what? It's officially day 99. I survived 100 days on this little island, from starting with one tree to fighting the dragon and turning our island into a real home. We did it. Thank you so much for following along. This was my first series on YouTube, and your guys' love and support means so much to me. 1.20 is dropping soon, and I'm super excited to start a new series for that, so I hope you'll subscribe to see what I do next. Thank you so much for watching.